What time? It's six o'clock. Is everything ready for the beginning? Okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Madhava Kunjabiha Gopi Jana Balabha Yadi Bada Dadi Gopi Jana Balabha Yadi Bada Dadi Jasod Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Jasod Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Nanda Brajajana Ranjana Jamana Tira Vanachadi Jamanati Ravana Chadi Ravana Chadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Radha Madhava Kunjabi Go pigeon up, Balabha, get even a Jamunati Jamunati Ravanachadi Charaja Astatara Sata Sisi Madhis Divine Grace Easy Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Gorpi Manandi Surabhi, are you online?
Surabhi, please speak something because I can't hear you. There's a translator in Beijing. I can hear you. And we're waiting for the sound to connect and usually it works, but yeah, it's, it's uh, 7 a.m. It's the morning Bhagavatam class time. Ah, there you are. Yeah, I can hear you, but I don't know why you cannot hear me. Okay, we can hear each other now, and technology is really great when it works. And now it's working, so it's great. So I'm going to begin. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So it's um, your Thursday morning... Srimad Bhagavatam class time, but this morning we're going to do something special. We're going to once again speak something about Srimati Radharani. I don't think any of us have Radharani fatigue because she's ever fresh and very sweet and we're happy to hear more and more and more. And I thought a very nice place to begin is at Govardhan Hill. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us <clears throat> that we should not walk on Govardhan Hill because Govardhan is not different than Krishna. Cows, they can graze on the side of Govardhan Hill, that's okay. But devotees of Krishna, we don't walk on Govardhan Hill, but look, Radha and Krishna, they're walking on Govardhan Hill. Many wonderful pastimes of Radha and Krishna took place along the side of Govardhan Hill. We'll be discussing some of those wonderful pastimes. I found this next illustration very interesting. Besides, normally Radha is on the other side of Krishna. It's normally Krishna playing the flute and Radha looking at Krishna. And it's a little different in this painting. And sometimes their pastimes together are a little mysterious. Those of you that have been to Vrindavan, you probably recognize this picture, this image. This is Manasi Ganga.
Govardhan Hill runs a long distance north and south and is very thin, and Manasi Ganga is right in the middle. The name Manasi Ganga is given because Krishna created the Ganga from his mind. There was a nice pastime in which Manasi Ganga was uh, um, manifested. Krishna saw that his father Nanda Maharaj was preparing for a journey, so he asked him, Where are you preparing to go? May I go with you? Nanda said, it's a very long journey, and you're very small. I don't think you you should go with me. I'm going to take bath in the river Ganga because of its purification purposes. And Krishna said, you don't have to go a long distance to Ganga. Ganga is right here in Vrindavan. Nanda put his arm around little Gopal and said, no, no, no. Ganga is very far away. And then Gopal said, no, no, Go for, uh, Ganga is right here. Come, I'll show you. <laughs> Within his mind, Krishna called Ganga Devi to personally come and fill this large part of Govardhan Hill and with a vast lake or um, pond or body of water, kund. So Krishna had actually brought Ganga all the way to Vrindavan. When Nanda Maharaj reached this kund, he patted Krishna on the head and said, No, no, this is just a nice lake. And Krishna pointed, See, there's Ganga Devi coming out of the Ganga. And when Nanda Maharaj saw Ganga Devi evolving, riding her crocodile on the surface of the Manasi Ganga, he embraced his son very well. I don't have to travel anywhere. When Krishna was present in Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill was much 
bigger, and Manasi Ganga was much wider and larger. One of the main services of the gopis was to milk the cows at the end of the day, and take the dairy products to the marketplace nearby. One day, they were planning to cross Manasi Ganga by boat to the marketplace on the other side. But when they got to the boat area, the supply of boats was almost finished. There was only one boat remaining, and it looked very old. And the person who was the boatman was asleep in the boat, of dark complexion. Hint: It was Krishna. The gopis were reluctant to get into this old boat, but there was no other choice, so they boarded the boat. And after the boatman got the boat well into Manasi Ganga, he told the gopis. I haven't eaten all day, and I'm really hungry. You're going to have to feed me something. They were very happy to feed the boatman, but after the boatman ate so much. Oh, he started to feel really tired, and told them he had to take a nap. <laughs> and he fell fast asleep. After some time, the gopis were in anxiety. They had to get to the marketplace, so they woke him up strongly. So he yawned and stood up and started plying the boat across Manasi Ganga. But just as he began rowing, a big, violent storm came swooping in, and big rain and wind, and a big storm started to happen right in the middle of Manasi Ganga. <laughs> The boatman. The boatman said, "This is really dangerous. This boat is very old. It has lots of holes, and we could sink."
All your clay pots with all your dairy products, you have to throw them over the side of the boat. And Krishna was rocking the boat this way and rocking the boat that way, and more water was coming in the boat. So they took their clay pots and tried to empty the boat from the water that was filling up the boat. And Krishna said, this is very dangerous. All the ornaments that you're wearing, you have to take them off and throw them into Manasi Ganga also. Fearing for their lives, they did exactly what the boatman said. Fearing for their lives, they did exactly what the boatman said. But the water kept coming in more and more. So Krishna said something very tricky. He said, because your clothes are all now wet and heavy, you have to take your clothes off too to throw that into, the, into Manasi Ganga. And the gopis said, oh no, what kind of boatman are you? And they jumped on him and they found out he had a flute in his back. It wasn't a boatman, it was Krishna. They were going to throw him across over the boat. Krishna smiled. The clouds and the storm subsided, everything became very peaceful, and they plied away their way across Manasi Ganga very contentedly. This is a celebrated pastime with Krishna and the gopis. And there are many other celebrated boat pastimes of Krishna and Radha enjoying together. Now here's a close-up of that same place <clears throat> at Manasi Ganga. Now we're going to move on along the eastern side of Govardhan Hill. And we're going to reach a place that's a very celebrated sacred place called Dan Gati.
There's a place by Dangati where it is said that there's a footprint of Radharani in the Govardhan Shila at the base of the Govardhan Hill. <clears throat> in this particular location, the Govardhan Hill is quite tall, as you see. And there's a little temple commemorating a very wonderful pastime enacted between Radha and Krishna, which I'm going to narrate. There's a whole book written by Raghunath Das Goswami describing this pastime and it's very beautiful. Yesterday we mentioned Dana Kelly, you remember because in Beijing there's a devotee named Dana Kelly. This is a pastime depicting um, that event of Krishna taking tax from the gopis. The, the pastime begins with the narration of Vasudev, because he lived in Mathura. Vasudev was arranging a yagya to be performed by the side of Govardhan Hill at Govindakund. The purpose, the purpose of the yagya was for the benefit of Krishna and Balaram, his two boys. And the chief priest was named Bhaguri Muni, a very celebrated son of Gargamuni who lived in Vrindavan. Bhaguri, Bhaguri, Bhaguri. So the yagya was getting set up and Radharani's parrot informed Radharani about the yagya. Radharani's parrot's name is Sumuki. Now, the cowherd community, they used parrots a lot instead of text messages with their cell phones. <coughs> the parrots would carry a message from here to there informing of different activities going on in Vrindavan that should be known by the owner of that parrot. When Radharani heard the news, she and the gopis made a plan to bring all the ghee and other dairy products needed for a big yagya. So, 
And the path that they followed was along Dangati, as you'll see, uh, as you saw in the paint or the the, the photograph before. It's a place <clears throat> where they would cross Govardhan Hill from one side to the other to bring the dairy products to Govindakund. Dan Gati G A T I Dan Gati Krishna's parrot found out and informed Krishna the gopis are bringing all their dairy products to the yagya. So, al along with his cowherd boys, he intercepted the gopis and stopped them. And he said something very funny. As you know, one of Krishna's names is Madan Mohan. And it means he's the attractor of Cupid. He's so attractive, he even attracts Cupid. He said, Kandarpa sent me. Kandarpa is the name of Cupid. And I see you're carrying many pots filled with dairy products. And you paid no taxes to the king. So before you pass, you're going to have to pay taxes. <clears throat> they all were very surprised. We've never been asked to pay taxes. Lalita came forward and spoke some very strong words to Krishna. Get out of our way. <laughs> but the cowherd boys wouldn't let them pass. Now, the cowherd boys and the cowherd girls, they're from the Vaisha community. And there are three main occupations for a Vaisha. <laughs> Cow protection, agriculture, and business, commerce, and trade. So, oh, Vaishas are really good at talking business. So, these are just boys and girls, but they were getting trained up how to talk business. So, Krishna 
asked one of his coward boyfriends to assess how much tax they should pay. And then it was decided that each of the gopis should pay five palmfuls of diamonds for their dairy products. <clears throat> Palm, they're in their hand. Palm of their hand. Diamonds. And then Krishna began to evaluate how much Radha tax should be. And this is the largest part of the book, the discussion about what Radha should pay for her eyebrows, for her smile, for her hair, for her beautiful eyes, for her special nose, for her chin. All the her limbs of her body, and so many sapphires, and so many this is, and so many that's. He was glorifying her features, saying she should pay tax because of her wonderful features. Now, it's a long section. I've included only a small portion just to give some idea, and you can just translate this into Chinese. And the persons in the room with me, they can read it in English. Do the best you can. <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination. There's pages and pages of Krishna describing the beauty of Radha and the tax she must pay because of her beauty. Radharani was not going to be flattered. She told Krishna, get out of my way. We're coming through. There's a yagya to be performed. Mm. 
面那个岩石，然后他对天使们说：“请你走开，我们要去到举举行压表的地方，那里会有一场压表，正要正要举行了。” So far, it had just been a verbal exchange. Then it started to get a little more intense, a little feisty. Just at that. Perfect moment, Nandi Muki, another one of the important Gopi friends of Radha, who is really good at mediation, she came along. N- Nandamuki asked, "What's going on here? Why are you in such a state of tension with one another? Please tell me. Maybe I can help." When they described everything to her, Nandamuki was simply amazed at the wonderful, loving exchange between. Radha and her gopis, and Krishna and his gopas. <coughs> She made a proposed solution. She said, "There's an important yagya that is taking place now. Let the gopis take all their dairy products to Bhaguri Muni for the yagya, and tomorrow we can meet up again at the same place and settle the dispute." <coughs> the next day, early in the morning, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gopis were assembled, all hiding behind trees and rocks, ready to pounce on the gopas when they came the next morning. And only a small. The same small number of cowherd boys were with Krishna. And when the cowherd boys came along, unsuspecting, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gopis surrounded them and tied them up to the trees. And they came right in front of Krishna and said, "You're the offender." Radharani is the queen of Vrindavan, and you've been bringing your cows in Vrindavan every day, not paying any tax for all the grass that they're eating. So now you have to pay tax. Mm-hmm. 
And not only that, you've offended Radharani. You're going to have to pay a tax for that too. Krishna smiled. What tax would you like? You bow before Radharani, place your head at Radharani's feet, and you beg her forgiveness. Krishna agreed. And this is the place along the side of Govardhan Hill where that pastime occurred is called um, Dan, Dan Nivartan Kund. Krishna took his bath in this Kund and everything was made nice again. <clears throat> and that's just one of the so many tax pastimes that occurred. <clears throat> you saw this image yesterday, right? This is at a place called San Kadi Kor by Varsana. San yes, San Kadi Kor is a place by Varsana. At the bottom of the hill that you see here is where the cow should be milked. And the gopis would bring the milk, as you see, carrying upon their heads like this. Sometimes Krishna would stop them and demand a tax before they could pass. Sometimes he would steal this way, as you see, hanging from the limb of a tree. And this is the passage called San Kadikor. It's a, it's a gully. It's where one mountainside meets another mountainside, and it's very, very difficult to pass. Kor, K-O-R, K-O-R, Kor. On the other side of the gully, is the village of Chitra Devi, one of the principal gopis. So, a similar thing happened in this particular pastime the next day the cowherd boys came to stop the gopis, they were prepared. <laughs> just before reaching San Karikor, they hid behind trees and stones and jumped on the cowherd boys and tied them up with their sikas to the trees and to the rocks. Mm -hmm. 
年时候，等这些牧牛郎、牧牛童们到来的时候，这些牧牛姑娘们就突然出来，然后把这些牧牛童们的这个啊心。Once the cowherd boys were free, the gopis could pass with their dairy products over to Chiksoli, the village of Chitradevi. When they, the, yes, the gopis were able to pass to go to the village of Chitradevi. So the cowherd boys later quietly followed and broke into the storeroom where they kept all the dairy products and were stealing the dairy products from the storeroom. But it was a trick. The gopis were playing a trick on the cowherd boys. They saw them enter the storeroom and they locked the storeroom from the outside. The cowherd boys turned to Krishna. What are we going to do now? He said, "No problem," and he pointed to a window for ventilation up high in the storeroom. And they all climbed out of the window, except for one of the boys, and that was Madhu Mangal. Madam Mangal. Madam Mangal was a Brahmin boy, and he was very fond of eating ladus, so he had a bit of a chubby belly. So he couldn't fit through the window. <laughs> the upper part of his body went through the window, but the belly part didn't fit through the window. And then the gopis opened the door, and they saw this wiggling pair of legs stuck in the window. And they got a, some sticks and began whacking the back end of Madhu Mangal. <laughs> So what did Madhu Mangal do? He called out, "Krishna, Krishna, please help!" <laughs> And then, the cowherd girls got Madhu Mangal out of the window. And they took him over to Krishna Kund, as you see pictured here. Look carefully at the photograph. 
and you'll see a rope hanging from one of the limbs of one of the trees. And here's that, here's the kund from another angle, but you see the rope hanging down, right? So they tied Madhu Mangal Sika to the rope, and he was hanging over the kund, and they were spanking his backside. He just took shelter of Krishna's holy name and was calling out for Krishna to, to come and rescue him. So Krishna came. When you call Krishna's name, he's there. And he put his hands on his hips and spoke very strongly to the gopis. You know what you've done. You have offended a brahmana. You're in big trouble now. They released Madhu Mangal Sika. And Krishna had him sit, as you see up there on the right side. We're going to see this from a different angle now. Now the... This is the rainy season. The water level is much higher. <laughs> and up on the top step is a tall seat where the Madhu Mangal sat. So Krishna asked Madhu Mangal, what would you like as a punishment for the gopis, for their offending you? And he said, they should bring three baskets filled with ladus, and I'll be all right. So he, as he was eating the ladus, he held up his right hand and gave blessings to all the gopis. May you be blessed with Krishna's favor throughout your life. May you be blessed with Krishna's favor throughout your life. Now there's another wonderful pastime near Varsana at a place called Pilipokar. Pili, P-I-L-I. And Pokhar, P-O-K-H-A-R. There's the place. <coughs> it's a village at the base of Varsana. 
So yesterday you heard about this benediction that Radharani received from Durvasa Muni to become very expert at cooking, right? Surabhi, did they hear that pastime? Yes, you mentioned. So, okay. Okay. So, from the time that Radharani was a very little girl, she had a benediction from Durvasa Muni to be really expert at cooking. And not only her cooking would be wonderful, but anyone who took the cooking from Radha would live a long life and be very healthy. When Mother Yasoda heard from Radharani's mother about this benediction, she made a request. Please send your daughter every morning to cook for Krishna before he goes out to herd the cows. So it became a regular practice every day. Radha and her friends would come to a very special kitchen called Radha's Kitchen in Mother Desoda's house, and Radha would prepare a wonderful meal for Krishna every morning. And you can only imagine what the relationship was like between Mother Jasoda and Radha. They developed incredible affection for one another. In a very natural way, Mother Jasoda began to think, wouldn't it be nice if one day Krishna and Radha were to become married? She didn't say anything, but that idea became stronger and stronger. And finally one day she had a little, she made a joke with Radha. With much laughter, in a joking way, she decorated the hands and the arms of Radha with decorations indicating the in, in, um, engagement for marriage with her son. Thank you. 
，就是提出婚约的这样的一个标志物，涂在了 Rada 的手里。Although it was only in fun. When Radha left to go back to her home, she was thinking, "What will my mother and father think?" So, with embarrassment and anxiety, she washed all the markings off her hand and arms into this kund. Called Pili Pokar. Pili Pokar. <laughs> Pili means yellow, so the water became yellowish from the turmeric on her arms and hands. There's more to the story, but. I'll narrate that another time. I want to move on. Especially when you visit Vrindavan, hopefully many of you will come with us next Kartik to Vrindavan. We'll all visit Yavat. As you see pictured here. Yavat, Yavat is the home of Amimanyu. Abhimanyu was the leader in that village of Yavat within Vrindavan. He was very, very wealthy, and his business was cowherding. Cowherding. He was a cowherd. Um, he was so wealthy; it is said that the inside of his house was plated with gold. And he was always very eager for his wife, Radha, to do pujas to increase his piety, so he could become more wealthy. He was. That kind of a person. In the in the middle is his mother Jatila because she used to keep her hair in a Jot on top of her head, a pile of messed up hair. She was thought to be something like a mad woman. And Kutila was always suspecting the worst of her husband's wife, Radharani. Kutila, 
So I'm going to tell a few pastimes and then we're going to end. There's, it could go on for another several hours. One time, um, Abhimanyu had gone out of the home early in the morning to arrange for purchase of some cows. <coughs> and when he was gone, Krishna, who knew exactly how to imitate anybody, appeared in the form of Abhimanyu and warned his mother, Jatila, you better watch out. I know that you and my sister are always concerned that Krishna will try to sneak in and associate with Radharani. I received word that he's just now on his way impersonating you, dressed like you and everything, so you get ready at the gate, have sticks, and don't let him in. And I'll go to protect Radha just in case he gets past you. So Krishna went to be with Radha in Jatila's own home. Mean? After some time, Abhimanyu came back home. And Jatila and Kantila were ready. They had their sticks and they spoke really harsh words. You imposter, we know who you are. You're a bad person. Get out of here or you'll beat you with our sticks till you can't move. And Abhimanyu was really surprised. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm your son and your brother, and I just came back to get some more money to buy some cows, and what happened to you? <coughs> he, uh, they, they just said it again. You know, we know who you are. Stop playing tricks on us. We're not going to be fooled. Get out or we'll beat you till you're dead on the ground. So he's, he, he thought, I have to, they, that some ghost has inhabited them. I better go find a, 
somebody that knows mantras to mit- relieve the ghost from my mother and sister. Yeah. Here's another pastime. It's very interesting. <clears throat> it's one of Dina Bandhu's favorites. He'll tell it when we go there to Yavat. Jatila said to her daughter, I'm unable to protect Radharani, our, your sister-in-law, from the glances of Krishna, so I'm going to forbid her from leaving the house. So as you heard, it was the practice of Radha, even in marriage, to go every morning and cook for Krishna. So Mother Jasoda's assistant named Danishta, she came to accompany Radha to go cook for Krishna one morning. But when Danishta found out that Radha couldn't leave the house, she made a plan. Lalita, Radha's dear friend, was also there, and Danishta whispered something in Lalita's ear. Danishta left. And Lalita and Vishaka went to spend time with Radha. Vishaka came from Radha's room and spoke to Jatila with great anxiety. Radha's just been bitten by a serpent, and she's about to die. We have to get a doctor quick. So Jatila decided she would go at once to Purnamasi and seek her advice. Jatila asked Purnamasi, do you have a doctor? Here's the situation. Radha is about to die from a snake bite. Uh, 
动了，他被蛇咬了，快要死去了。Purnamasi said, "Most likely, Gargi, the daughter of Gargamuni, knows how to do this. Her father probably trained her." 因为 Gargamuni 教过他。And Gargi said, "Well, my father didn't train me, but I have a sister, and she just happens to be visiting me from a distant place, and she has all this training. I can bring her. Her name is Vidyavali. Vidyavali." When the father is Gargamuni, who lived in Mathura. <coughs> the father is Gargamuni, who lived in Mathura. When the young girl. Became married, she lived with her husband. Gargi's husband lived in Brindavan. Vidyavali's husband, it was said, lived in Kashi, so she was visiting her in Brindavan. Jatila pleaded, "Oh, Gargi, please come, bring your sister Vidyavali. Come at once to save the life of my daughter-in-law Radha." Meanwhile, Dhanushta had put Krishna in a costume, so he would appear to be the sister of Gargi Vidyavali. And the doctor came, arrived at Jatila's home. So, Doctor Vidyavali <laughs> made the following recommendation. I know the proper mantras, but it has to be done in private because it's private mantras, and I need betel nuts to chew. And then pass the betel nuts to the mouth of the victim. Jatila agreed. So Krishna, in the form of Doctor Vidyavali, entered Radharani's room.
and he was chanting mantras very loudly with Jatila pressed with her ear against the door. So Krishna then imitated the sound of the snake as he was chanting the snake to release his poison. Krishna imitated the sound of the snake that was saying the reason that this bad event has taken place is because Jatila ordered Radha to not go to Nandagram and cook for Krishna. <laughs> and if Jatila continued to prevent Radha to go to cook for Krishna, then there's no doctor that could cure the poison that I've bitten Radha with. <laughs> In fact, the very next day, your daughter in law will die. And Jatila heard this from the other side of the door. And she called out loudly through the door, Okay, okay, Radharani can go and resume cooking for Krishna. So Dr. Vidyavali emerged from the room and said, it's all okay now. <laughs> Dr. Vidyavali emerged from Radharani's room and said, she's well now, All everything is going to be okay. Now, there's more stories, but it takes a long time to translate into English, I mean, into Chinese, and we've gone for an hour and a half. So maybe next time when we get together, I can tell some more stories. <coughs> One of them involves Purnamasi, as you see her pictured here in this painting. This is the, the palace of Rishabhanu. No, the palace of Abhimanyu the palace of Abhimanyu, and that's Radha upstairs. So we'll tell this story another time. And there's many more.
Naturally, the pastimes of Radharani <clears throat> are very sweet, just like her. And I'll end with just showing some nice photographs of Radha Shamasundra in Vrindavan. On our left is Lalita, or on, on Shamsundra's right is Lalita. And on our right, or Radha's left, is Vishaka. Here's the same day, but a little closer up image. And again, the same day in a close picture of Radha's face. And the same day, a close-up of Radharani's feet. In Vrindavan, once a year on Radhastami, it's a practice to show Radharani's feet. Otherwise, no. Radharani's features are very sweet and charming. Her smile is very soothing. In, in Vrindavan, they decorate with abundant, colorful flowers. I mean, look at the detail of the flower ornaments that she's wearing. There's again Radharani's feet. Another festival day photograph. And that's it for this evening. Only it's your morning. <laughs> so we'll see if there's some discussion. So, this question from Li Li Bhakti, Alpha Omalization is to Guru. So, in India, there is a drama. In the drama, it. Sorry. In the drama, it said that when Radharani appeared on the earth 5,000 years ago, he was cursed by a devotee. Is this true? No. Is it? There's a story in Brahma Vivarta Purana that speaks of an argument in Krishna Loka between Radharani's elder brother Sridham and Radha. Brahma Vivarta Purana tells this story. Pur 
There was a disagreement between Sri Dham, her elder brother, and Radha. So Sri Dham said, "You're going to have to take birth on Earth." And Radha was in anxiety. She said to Krishna, "Oh, my brother said." He said, "No worries. It is time for our appearance." And we'll go together. I'll be with you. It was like that, something like that. Brahma Vivarta Purana. That answer the question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. I don't know what's on your bead bag, but she probably has snatched Krishna's flute to play it. And Surabhi can tell you where to find in Nectar Devotion the description of Krishna's different types of flutes. They're of different lengths, they're of different numbers of holes, and so forth. Next. Yeah. 
So karmic, this this word karmic is not good. Oh, it's very good. Cunning. Oh, she. It's a good quality. She's very clever. She. Everything she does is to enhance Krishna's pleasure, so she figures out very clever ways to arrange for Krishna's pleasure. That's her cunning. Okay, there's one question here. Yes? One more question over there. Okay, go ahead. Can feel, feel the pastimes. Yeah. You have to be qualified, but yeah, more than feel, you can participate. I th let's do this, Surabhi. Yes. I'm going to do the local questions, and you'll have five more questions at, after he finishes the local question. Okay. Maharaj, this question is from Radhika Priya. <coughs> um, so, Srimad, we, we hear that Radha's name is not mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam because um, when Shukadev Goswami speaks, he may go into a trance. But it was actually written by Vyasadev, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why he did not write it? Because Shukadev was the speaker. He's speaking what was spoken. He's writing what was spoken. He didn't speak it, so he didn't write it. So Vyasadev wrote uh, after Shukadev Goswami was speaking. Yeah, of course. Okay. I oh. thought I thought Vyasadev wrote Srimad Bhagavatam after that Shukadev Goswami spoke that. Doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the chronology is not critical. What's <coughs> critical is. Shukadev Goswami is speaking, and he's writing what Shukadev Goswami is speaking, whether it's before or after, chronologically. He's just writing what he was going to speak, or what he in the past, in the past, what he spoke. The chronology is not the essence. So you translate, you understand the question, Surabhi, and give the answer. Yeah, so go ahead and you translate for them. Um, 
我们生活性的国家老公了解这个人之后，然后转述了性的国家老公，那已经是在此之前有了国家老公，那为什么现在这个微商没没有提到汪汪的名字呢 ？So we've been going for almost two hours. We've been going for almost two hours, and I'm ready to wind up. Looks fatigue in the room here. Now, the, for the, for Surabhi, yeah, just quiet for a moment. I'm going to explain the, to the people in the room. They're used to a two-hour class because it takes so long to translate it. So one-hour class becomes two hours to translate into Chinese. So they're used to a two-hour class, and we're a little fatigued because we're not used to two-hour classes. So we just have to be. I mean, if you're restless or or something, you can do what you need to do. We'll go for another thirteen minutes. Go ahead, Surabhi. I'm surprised that question is being asked, but the answer is yes. 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 Now, our idea of protection may not be the same as Krishna's idea of protection. Next. Well, not the ones that are living too, <laughs> and the ones that are already dead. <laughs> Next. Yeah, next. Pramila Priya, 请代步。感谢您精彩的讲课。今天相识光真的太甜美了。我们知道，施加的的丈夫和婚姻只是一个影子摆设而已。为了增加他和 Krishna 的爱恋交流，请问，当 Krishna 离开 Vrindavan 之后，圣人 Radharani 无法直接与 Krishna 相见，在余生中又是怎样与？ 
态，在余生中又是以怎样的心态度过婚姻、家庭和生活呢？怎么安稳？有关 r a d a r a n i 的女性经典有没有描述？还有关 Rabbi r a d r a n i 的莲花足的标志，它的右脚底上的鱼代表着什么呢 ？Very intricate question. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'll open my questions to you. Thank you for your wonderful lecture. So these、um, pastimes about r a d r a n i is so sweet. We know that Sima r a d r a n i is married. With her husband, like a shadow. So those pastimes just uh, the per uh, uh, those pastimes are meant for enhance, increase, uh, or enhance the learning, uh, the loving, the love pastimes of her loving pastimes with Krishna. So. When Krishna leave, left to the Lord, and then Radharani couldn't directly meet with Krishna. So in her rest of life, how she met Radharani?、Uh, in which mood she met she met Radharani?、Uh, go through his her marriage life. This is the first question. This is the first time they've been asked this question. But she went through her married life the same way before and after because it was a so-called marriage to her so-called husband, etc. That's how. Krishna 离开，在文达文和 Krishna 离开文达文，他都是以同样的方式度过他的婚姻。他因为他的这个婚姻只不过是和所谓的丈夫，呃，生活在和所谓的丈夫结婚。It is said many times by our acharyas that Abhimanyu never even touched Radha. And don't ask me any details about that one. <laughs> But our acharyas say that regularly. I've not heard any, other than Krishna. Arrange for all the residents of Vrindavan to enter into their aprakat or unmanifest lila. Next. Yeah, the next about the marks on Shima Chaturani's lotus feet. So. I I don't have any answer to that question. I haven't studied her feet. Oh, 关于这个 Shima Chaturani 的莲花足的标志，我没有研究过，所以呢，关于这方面的问题，我无法作答。These are very esoteric questions and not so practical. For your advancement in bhakti, so she should be. She should focus. Jivana Priya should focus on more practical questions that will help her advance in bhakti. Jivana Priya, you 提出的问题应该是非常实际的，有利于在 Krishna 之举当中取得进步的一些实际的问题。Jivana Priya, this this Jivana Priya is translated. Uh, Dana Kini, from Dana Kini, 
Hare Krishna， 感恩玛哈拉吉的动人的讲述和所有玛哈吉的生动的翻译。请问 ，Jatila 和 Kutila 是否都是永恒解脱的灵魂？当我们阅读关于他的消失光时，应该以怎样的心态对待他们呢 ？This question from Dhanakari. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you for your very vivid uh, narration about those pastimes. And uh, my question is that about Jatila and Kutila, both of them are eternal liberated souls. That's my understanding. They're not. Um, I I I don't know anything authoritative from our scriptures, so I can't say for sure. But that's my understanding. My answer is, I don't know anything authoritative from Scripture, so I cannot say for sure. But as far as I understand, yes. There, we consider them as being very fortunate. They are inspired by super soul within their heart to act in such a way that increases the joy of Krishna's cleverness and Radha's cleverness. To meet despite opposition. Despite. So, Rabbi, it's time to end. It, it's, we've gone more than two hours, and I'm ready to end. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Last one. <laughs> happens every time. So I open my attention to Guru Dev. Radha Rani, the position of the Radha Rani is very elevated. So his elevated position is established by Krishna because of he of her pure love for Krishna, or due to other reasons. Well, it's not just because of. Krishna establishes her in a certain way. Rather, eternally, she is in that position. Now, if you can say Krishna establishes every everything that's eternal, then that's okay. But she's eternally in that position. It's not like once upon a time, Krishna was thinking, "Well, she's really nice, and so I'll establish her in this very special way." Not so. It's not a time bound. It's an eternal. Relationship with Krishna. Yeah, I think 
不是因为因为什么什么原因，然后 Krishna 确立了他的崇高的地位，所以 Krishna 觉得拉尼他的崇高的地位永恒就是这样。嗯，并不是说在很嗯在很久以前某个时候，拉多拉尼看呃 Krishna 看到拉多拉尼这么好，然后确立了他的崇高的地位，不是这样子的，不是。是，拉德拉尼他的崇高的地位是永恒的，他永恒的处在这样崇高的地位。Okay.、Yeah. It's been nice being with you, and we'll see you again next time. 非常高兴跟大家在这里相聚，啊，我们下一次见。啊，阿里克什纳。感谢大家，感谢大家。